All right, so for this lab, we're gonna need our LabQuest device, our iPad. We're gonna need a motion detector, a big piece of wood. So one of these big pieces of wood and a couple cardboard boxes. So the very first thing that we're gonna do here is plug our motion detector into our LabQuest. So we're going to plug in to the digital port. So the motion detector is actually a uh, device that plugs into the digital port. So on the top of the LabQuest here, we'll plug into the digital port. Don't plug into these ports. It's up here on the top, the digital port. It won't work on any of these. Make sure that your motion detector, when you flip it open, is set on the car setting. I think either of these would work, but it works a lot better up on the car setting here. Okay, so this is how this is gonna work. You're gonna wanna tape your motion sensor to this board. The board is gonna represent a ship. So ship, the table is sea level. So you have a ship on the sea, and it's taking sonar measurements using our motion probe. So it's taking sonar measurements. The box is going to represent an ocean floor feature. So you're going to find a box. It's going to represent an ocean floor feature. The ocean floor, the bottom of the ocean floor, is going to be the floor, the floor of the room. So you're going to move this along as you take your measurements. And it's going to take sonar measurements, bouncing it off of the floor, bouncing it off of the uh, ocean feature, the box. So before you run the experiment, make sure to set up our lab quest. For this experiment, we're going to be doing a time-based trial. Change your rate to 10 samples per second. So we're going to do 10 samples per second. Duration is going to be 10 seconds. Okay, so once I'm ready to run, I'm going to hit play on my lab quest and I'm going to push the boat from this side of the floor over the box and to the other side of the floor. So I'll hit play now. All right, so this looks really good. Uh, your data should look something like this. So this is the ocean floor when it hits the box and back up to the ocean floor. So it might be a little upside down from your perspective, but it's gonna, your data should look something like this for trial one. So I'm gonna connect this to my graphical analysis. So there's a couple ways that we could look at our data here. You're gonna to wanna to find the distance to the floor, which I'm kind of pointing at right now. You can do that visually in a couple different places on each end of the box. So 0 0.986, something along that order for me at least. And then down here would be your box. So again, this kind of looks upside down. It's just how it's gonna be. Um, when you're measuring sonar, 0.644. So you can kind of eyeball this. One pretty nifty way to do this actually is to select all of your data at once like this and view statistics. This is what I'd like to see in your lab report for a screenshot. So this will give you your minimum, your maximum values. Um, those are going to be the distances that you need. Uh, and then to find the height of the box, you're going to want to subtract your maximum, the distance to the floor, from your minimum, the distance of the box. So I'm going to take a quick screenshot of this. 
And what you're going to do for part two is similar. So you're going to get a second graph for part two as well when you run that experiment. So to finish the tables that you have to fill out for this lab, you're going to have to measure a couple things manually. So you're going to measure the distance of the box from sea level, so from the table. You're going to measure the height of the box. So just the height of the box, that's going to represent the height of your uh, seafloor object. And then you're going to measure the distance from the table to the floor. So sea level down to the floor of the ocean, which is the floor. So measure those three things, and you'll be able to finish filling out that table on your lab sheet. All right, so for part two, you're going to run a similar experiment to what we just did, but you're going to be using two boxes now. And you want to find two boxes that are different heights or different lengths. You want to adjust the variable so that the boxes are different somehow. And you're just going to run an experiment similar to what we just did, but with two boxes. So that's going to be your second trial. As always, let me know if you have any questions when it comes to filling out the lab worksheet, especially when it comes to part two with the second setup and the problems that are related to part two. Make sure to clean up your lab station when you're all done with the procedure of the lab. This was our mapping the ocean floor lab. Thanks for watching.